Today we're going to go over the Odyssey and the parts of the book that we're going to be reading together as a class. The Odyssey itself is divided into 24 books or stories, and those correspond to the 24 letters in the Greek alphabet. We are only going to be reading 14 of those stories, and every time you read a story, you're going to have a narrative writing focus that you will be focusing on. We will be looking at diction and detail, imagery, mood, perspective, dialogue, and characterization. All of these are elements of narrative writing, so we're going to look for them in the stories of the Odyssey so that later on you can utilize them in your own narrative. Let's go ahead and start with a timeline. First of all, the Odyssey takes place over 10 years. The Iliad, which is the story that precedes the Odyssey, is the story of the Trojan War. So the Odyssey actually begins, uh, the timeline of it begins when Odysseus leaves Troy on his way all the way home. And basically for the first one or two years after he leaves Troy, he goes on a series of adventures with his crew. They um, encounter a whole bunch of different, um, you know, uh, monsters and witches and different things. They have the Cyclops, the Lotus Eaters, Circe, the Sirens, Scylla and Crybdis. And when they reach the Cattle of the Sun God, all of his men die. The next seven to eight years, he is actually trapped on an island with uh, Calypso, and he is held prisoner by her. And then he uh, reaches King Alcinous's court. She releases him, and he reaches King Alcinous's court, and he goes back and he tells this entire story of everything that happened. And when he finally heads home, all of these things only happen in about a month at the very end of the story. What we're going to do is that he doesn't, Homer doesn't tell the stories in order that they happened, he skips around. So we're going to read the order, um, we're going to read in the order Homer tells the st stories. So I have numbered the stories for us so that you know exactly where it is that we are in the stories as it was told by Homer. So we'll start with the first story, which is tell the story, and then we'll go on to the second story, which is Queen Penelope. Third story is King Alcinous's court. Fourth story is Calypso. Fifth story is Cyclops. Sixth story is Witch Circe, and so on and so forth. Some of them you will see combined um, on in the different modules so that we can read a few stories at a time. So what really happens is the way Homer tells the story is he starts with an overview. It's called Tell the Story, an overview. That's the first one we'll read. But then he starts kind of in the middle. This story right here is a story of Queen Penelope and what's happening at home while Odysseus is gone, not just during the Trojan War, but also all of these years. So by the time he actually arrives home, he's actually been gone 20 years before he even gets home. So this is what's happening to her in those 20 years while he's gone. Then we're going to be at King Alcinous's court, which is story three. And King Alcinous is going to, when, when he meets King Alcinous, He's going to go back and he's going to tell, he's going to say, these are all the things that happened just before I arrived. First of all, I just came from the island of Calypso. Here is how I was treated there. I was kept with her for seven or eight years. And uh, when she finally released me, I actually came directly here. Then he will go all the way back. We're going to read the story of the Cyclops, will be, which will be story five. Then we'll read about Circe, story six. We'll read about him going to the land of the dead and meeting Tiresias in story seven. In story eight, we will read about the sirens, Scylla and Charybdis. And then we will go to story nine, which is the cattle of the sun gods. This is where all of his men die. And then we will go all the way back to the beginning or to the end, actually, which is his homecoming. And there is stories 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are all, all happen in this last half of the month and they're told in order that they actually happened. So the red numbers indicate the stories we're reading in the order that Homer told the stories. So when you go to open this assignment, which is Tell the Story in Queen Penelope, you'll see on there two different stories. And what I'm going to do right now is go over with you some photos that will help you understand what's happening when you read Tell the Story. First of all, he's going to say, Sing in me, muse tell me a story. Basically, um, there was a belief that the muses, there were nine daughters of Zeus, and they were all 
um, they had this divine inspiration to be able to, they, they would inspire men. This is a muse whispering in, into a man's ear. They would inspire men and women to, um, in the arts. They would inspire them in dance, in poetry, in music. That's why you see them using music. So, or playing music. So for example, if someone ever says to you, you are my muse, what they're saying is, you are my inspiration. You are the one who um, inspires me to do something creative or to do something great. So it would be a compliment to be called someone's muse. In Tell the Story, he's going to refer to Lord Helios, the sun god. Here is a depiction of Lord Helios. He's often depicted with like the sun's rays coming off of his head. And he is known to be um, a chariot driver and he will um, fly through the sky um, keeping watch over the earth and bringing the sun to the earth. And he has an island and on the island he has his sacred cattle. These are cattle that never die and they are sort of like his children. And he, um, he, he warns Odysseus and the men not to kill the cattle and um, otherwise like his wrath will come upon them. And so we know since I've told you already that that's when the men die. There is a problem that happens when they get to the land of the sun god. They're also going to tell the story of Calypso. And if you take a look at these pictures, you'll see these are different depictions of Calypso. This is her, this is her, and this is her, and Odysseus. And you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, a lot of times Calypso is shown with um, holding um, kind of like a lasso or a rope. You can see there here. It's like a magical rope that bewitches him and um, makes him forget his homeland for a while, which is one of the reasons why she is able to keep him there for so long because he's in love with his wife. He's married with his wife, but she seduces him and keeps him there for quite a bit of time. You also can see in the end, he's very, very unhappy. You can see he's looking away from her, looking away from her. And even here with his hand, he's sort of reject rejecting her. And in the story, it alludes to that um, in Tell the Story. But then later when we read about Calypso, it will, um, it will tell us more. But this is sort of a preview of what it's like when he's on Calypso's island. Also in Tell the Story, it mentions Poseidon. Poseidon is the god of the sea and Zeus's brother. And so this is a picture of Zeus, um, who's the god of the sky or the head of all gods. And then you have Poseidon down here who has the power to ruin ships. And this um, Poseidon is angry at um, Odysseus throughout the entire story. And so he plays a pivotal role. And so in the first story, he's mentioned. Also, they talk about him wanting to get home to Ithaca. This would be a depiction of what they believe was the island that would have been Odysseus's home in Greece. And then um, again, I, what I want to remind you is that when you read Tell the Story, this is where we're at. Okay, Tell the Story is an overview. I want you also to look here for a moment, uh, maybe pause the video and take a look at this picture and see if there are any mythological personalities that you actually recognize. When you move on from this story and the second story to the third and fourth story, you're going to read about Calypso. And I want you to take a look at this picture and see if there's anyone in here that you might recognize from any stories that you have read in the past. Notice things like the wings on this person's feet, the shield that this woman is holding and uh, what she's wearing on her head. Notice where the light is in the different pictures. Um, notice this one is pregnant. Um, and think about who these different people might be in these pictures. When you get to story four, which is Calypso the Sweet Nymph, this is actually a picture of them. You have Athena here, who's the goddess of war and, sh and wisdom, and she actually is someone who helps um, Odysseus and is his ally. And in the story, she tells Zeus, this is Zeus up here, um, notice all the people in red. They're the people who are the most important parts of this story. Athena tells Zeus to send Hermes, and we know it's Hermes because of the winged feet, um, send Hermes down to tell Calypso to let go of Odysseus and send him on his way. So this is a depiction of the story of Calypso, the sweet nymph. And when you get to story four, it might help you in understanding. That's all for now. 
um, I'd like you to go ahead and turn to this assignment. Let me go back. And on that assignment, when you open it up, you'll see that there is a screencast with some directions on what to do.